John, I would desperately want all religions to be true or even one religion to be true. It would give me some hope for the future other than the bleak picture that my cosmologist friends offer me. Mm -hmm. But you see such contradictions between religions that it is very tempting to just reject them all. It's impossible for them all to be real, and therefore, how could any of them be real? Well, what, con what are contradictory? Are their doctrines, their beliefs, aren't they? Well, that seems to be pretty important. But what are their beliefs about? The general assumption is their beliefs about uh, ultimate reality. Yes. But I would say they're not. That Their beliefs about uh, the way in which we are perceiving reality within our own tradition and through the lens of our tradition. So, um, actually, they don't contradict one another because their awareness is of different things. One set of doctrines is a description of, um, let us say, the Christian uh, understanding of, of the ultimate. Uh, and uh, Islamic doctrine is um, a description of the Islamic understanding of the ultimate. They're not, a, they're not different descriptions of the ultimate in itself, but of the ultimate as, as thought and experienced by us within our tradition. Well, the only thing that you can say they have in common is they all have, a, they have an ultimate. Right. And that ultimate is a transcendent ultimate beyond the physical world. Yes. But right. that's where you stop, because after that, they are directly contradictory. Yes, well, that's correct, yes. <laughs> and that disturbs me, but doesn't disturb you quite as much. Not quite as much, no. <laughs> no, I mean, I can... Um, I can put up with, with facts when I'm presented with them, and it is a fact that within different traditions, the transcendent, the ultimate, is very differently thought about and, uh, and experienced. And um, why not? That's okay. Well, I, I'm not sure it's okay, um, but I, I'd like to try to understand. Uh, you talk about the difference between naive realism mm. and critical realism. Yeah. How does that help us here? Well, it does help us, yes. That's a good, provides quite a good way of putting it. Wh which is your language, of course. <laughs> well, you see, naive realism, the distinction, incidentally, was drawn first by some, a group of American philosophers in the early 20th century. Um, naive realism says that things are just as we perceive them. If I see something as solid, it is solid. Critical realism uh, acknowledges that there is a, contri a human contribution. Uh, I mean, it was Kant who first pointed this out. There is a human contribution uh, that enables us to interpret the clues of experience. You see, when I, when I look at you, um, I assume that there's a back of your head as well as the front that I can see, and that there's a, that there's a whole body and not just empty clothes. <laughs> but this is an assumption, but it's an assumption based on experience, uh, and, and this assumption actually affects the way I'm seeing you. Mm -hmm. I'm seeing you as solid, <laughs> even though, you know, I don't actually see, literally see you as solid. I, I, nevertheless, uh, I, when my mind is at work, as it is all the time, and, and looking, I see you as solid. Okay. Now, how does that apply to the obvious contradictions between the father of Jesus, who is the god of the Judeo-Christian religions, and the, um, the Allah of Islam, and then the cosmic consciousness of, uh, of Buddhism, mm. and the uh, different gods in the Hindu religion? Well, a naive realist would say of each of these that it, is, that it is itself real. And therefore contradictory. And therefore contradictory. Yes. But the critical realist will say that just as the human mind is at work in sense perception, so also it is in our religious awareness. So that what, what we are describing in each case is the way in which the, the transcendent appears uh, through the lens of that particular tradition. And so there's no contradiction in the fact that 
different traditions provide different lenses uh, leading to different uh, sets of doctrines. Is there no degradation of the real, Difference. diminishment of the real, because it is expressed in all these bizarre different ways? No, I don't. Why should there be? Well, if the real is so real and so powerful, you'd think you'd be able to interpret it in at least consistent ways, but to see it interpreted in all these strange and contradictory ways, at least, let's be say, if it, if it is real, it's not very powerful. Well, each of these ways is consistent, but uh, the real, no, I mean, to, to, to call the real powerful or weak is to use a set of terms which don't apply to it. It's neither, it isn't that in, that it's, um, in not being powerful is weak, or in not being weak is powerful. It's rather that this dichotomy simply doesn't apply. Is that a rationalization uh, to to get out of the responsibility of if you if you have a, a truth claim about something so important like the fundamental reality and then just telling me any question I ask about it is out of bounds? <laughs> <laughs> well, l let me remind you of um, something we find in the Buddhist scriptures. Um, somebody asked the Buddha, uh, "What happens to a Buddha after death?" Does he, in what kind of world does he arise? And the Buddha said, arise does not apply. So the other man says, then does he not arise? And the Buddha says, not arise does not apply. <laughs> and then does he both arise and not arise? No, that doesn't apply. Does he neither arise nor not arise? <laughs> that doesn't apply. You see, it's the idea of, of, of dichotomies or trichotomies or core is <laughs> not applying. And uh, so that a lot of the questions we ask about the ultimate, the real, simply don't apply.